Today, I'm gonna to be starting up a new series on how to submit comics to CGC for your best results. And I got the idea for this series from a subscriber who commented on one of my videos, letting me know that they wanted to send books into CGC, but were a little hesitant and uneasy because they didn't really know what to do. And so they asked if I would do a video on this topic and I thought, man, this is such a great topic with so many great things to say that I'm just gonna go ahead and start up a whole new series. Now, this is the second series that I have started in response to a viewer's comment. The first is my series on how to sell comics on eBay, and now my second is on how to submit comics to CGC. So please, if there's a topic that you want to know more about, I might be interested in talking about it, and others might be interested in hearing about it, so tell me in the comments below what topics you would like me to cover. So to get this series on how to submit books to CGC started off, I thought I'd first talk about how do you even choose what books to send off? Because of course, sadly, you can't submit everything because it's just going to get obviously too expensive for all of us. Now, I think there are two main categories of reasons why you might consider sending a book off to CGC. And the first of those is sending them off for non-financial reasons. For example, you might have a book in your collection that just means a lot to you and its value might not increase by having it slabbed, but you just want to preserve it because of its personal significance. So for example, last year I sent off my two biggest keys from my childhood collection off to CGC. And that was the New Mutants 98, first appearance of Deadpool, that came back at a 9.2, and an Amazing Spider-Man number 361, first appearance of Carnage that came back at an 8.5. Now, at those grades, those books might actually be more valuable raw, but I wanted to send them off anyway because they just really mean a lot to me, and they bring back so much nostalgia from my childhood when I look at these particular copies. You know, it's not just a New Mutants 98, but it's the New Mutants 98 that I bought off the newsstand as a kid. And so when I look at that book, I think about all the good times I had collecting comics as a kid. And they're ones that I'm never going to sell, but I still wanted to preserve them because, again, of that personal importance that they have to me. Now, there can be other reasons why a book has personal importance to you. For example, maybe you inherited it from a father or some other relative, or someone gave it to you in an A-OK, -okay. but for some reason, this book is not just financially valuable to you, but it's emotionally valuable to you, and you just want to preserve it. And you want to be able just to pick it out easy from your collection and just admire it and look at it. And speaking of admiring and looking at books, another reason to send your books off to CGC is so that you can display them like art. And I think this is actually a fantastic idea because slabbing your book often costs less than even buying a picture frame. And so it's really not that expensive to turn your comic book into a work of art. And I think they're really awesome works of art to have around your house. Obviously they bring back a lot of nostalgia, and good feelings when you look at them, and they make great conversation pieces. So if someone comes over to your house and they see a Spider-Man comic hanging on the wall, they'll say, oh, wow, so you like Spider-Man, huh? And so then that can launch into a real cool conversation about comics and your interest in them. And now, of course, if you have a family, there's one disclaimer, you can't just go putting up comics wherever you want. You have to make sure you're on the same page with your wife, especially, or your husband and you wanna make sure the kids aren't gonna just knock them down and all that kind of stuff. But if you're a single guy or girl, of course, it's no problem at all if you wanna do it. And if you're a family person, you just have to kind of be a little more creative about uh, making some kind of space for your comics. And in fact, me and my wife have recently been discussing how I can make a comic wall somewhere in our home, despite the fact that we have a large family and that she herself isn't like a huge comic fan, but she realizes it's important to me. And so she wants to make that space for me so that it's not just her stuff hanging up all around the place, but that I have my stuff as someone who obviously is a part of this family as well. And so I'm really excited about that. Uh, and if you want to display your comics, sending them off to CGC is a very affordable way to do so. Now, the second category of reasons to send your books off to CGC are financial ones. 
So for example, maybe you have a comic that you know is gonna lose $100 in value if it gets a little ding here or there, and you're worried about having to move your comics from room to room, or you know one day you're gonna make a move. And so you could send that off to CGC so that it gets slabbed and of course preserved and protected more than it would in a standard bag and board which then of course is gonna allow it to retain its value when it's kept in that nice, clean, crisp condition. Also, if you're going to sell off your comics, you might want to send them off to CGC so that you know how to accurately price them. So you might have a comic that should be priced at $200 if it's a 4.0, but $400 if it's a 5.0. And you look at it and you just don't know which way to price it, and so you're concerned that, man, if I price this at a 4.0, but this dude sends it off and gets a 5.0, I've lost out on over $100 of value. And so sending it off to get it slab can help you get an accurate grade that you can use to price your comics and then create a little bit of safety and security in terms of selling those books at the right price. And one of the great things about slabbing, of course, is it not only offers protection to the seller, but also to the buyer. So a buyer doesn't want to go through something like I did last year, where I bought a book from some pictures that looked like a 6.0, and I sent it off and found that there was actually a tear on the inside that dropped it all the way to a 4.0, and I couldn't tell that in the pictures, and probably the person who sold it didn't even realize it. You know, they probably hadn't opened the comic in years, so I don't think they were trying to scam me or something. But you know, I ended up losing some money there because I just didn't know accurately what that grade of that comic was. And so it offers the buyer protection in addition to the seller. And because it offers the buyer protection, this means that many buyers will often be willing to pay a premium to get a book from you if they are slabbed. And so in other words, if you're looking to sell a book, often buyers will pay you more if it's slabbed because they have security for themselves. But this is not always the case. And I think there's a misconception that simply slapping your book will increase its value almost no matter what. But often, like in the case of my New Mutants 98 and my Amazing Spider-Man 361, slapping it can actually decrease its value from whether or not it was sold raw. And I think this is because some buyers just prefer raw books and others just are turned off by a book if the grade isn't what they're looking for. And so, of course, then the tricky question is, and this is why I made this video, is, well, then which books will end up becoming more valuable by slabbing uh, versus which ones will lose value? And so books that will tend to gain value by slabbing are, first of all, major keys because they are worth so much money that a buyer really wants that buyer protection when they purchase the book. You know, it's the greatest of the feel bads when you buy a book and then you think it's like a 7.0 or an 8.0 and it comes back a grade or two lower. I mean, that hurts a buyer. And that might not be a big deal if you're talking about a book that cost $100, but if you're talking about a book that costs $500, $600, $700, Man, the, the, the hurt from losing out $200 in value simply because you had misgraded it through pictures is, is devastating. And so a lot of buyers just won't deal with that and they won't give you full market value for the book unless it's graded. So number one, major keys. And number two, high grade books. And the more recent the book, the higher the grade needs to be before you make a decision to send it in. If, again, your purpose is for financial reasons. If you're looking to display it, it doesn't really matter as much, but if you're talking about just for financial reasons, then the newer the book, the higher the grade has to be. Because of course, when you're talking about newer books, there's hundreds or thousands of copies of these books in high grade, and so they're not hard for people to get their hands on, and so they're not gonna pay a lot for your 9.2 or 9.0 for a book that just came out four or five years ago. And so with very few exceptions, I personally wouldn't send in a modern book for financial reasons unless I was pretty confident that it would at least get a 9.6. You know, if you step back to Copper Age, there's a few bo more books that I would add in that you know, at lower grades, they're worth it. You know, like talking about Secret Wars number eight, 
but for instance, you know, I, I sent in a Thor 337 first appearance of Beta Ray Bill, and it unfortunately had a stain on the back cover that knocked it down to an 8.5, and that book is worth much less as an 8.5 than it would be if I had never sent it in, and I ended up, of course, losing the 50 or so dollars of cleaning and pressing cost and getting it graded, so I really made a mistake with that one. So please, I'm doing this so that you learn from my mistakes. Don't send in an 8590 Copper Age book unless, again, you just want it for your personal collection or you know it's a mega key like uh, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one. I mean, things like that. Secret Wars number eight, you can get away with an 8580 probably and it'd still be you know, worth more than it would be raw. Uh, but those are the kind of books that they really need to be Otherwise, you really need to be, again, in that 9.6, maybe 9.4 category. And then you go back to Bronze Age. And once again, the pool expands a little bit. And so especially for some mega keys like Incredible Hulk 181, it's probably worth sending in any book regardless of the grade. But that's still a very limited amount of books. You only want to send in your mega keys regardless of the grade. And then, you know, there's other big keys that you can send in, you know, if they're 7, 8, oh, yeah, the numbers just keep expanding. But if you're just looking for a regular book, just because it's old doesn't mean it's going to be more valuable if it gets graded. And so you still need to be looking for non-keys, certainly in the nines. And then you go back to, to Silver Age and the same story, the pool expands of what books you can send in. But even then, a lot of people think that, oh, well, this book was made in the 60s, I can send it in, and it's going to be valuable. But there are lots of books, especially you know, if you're talking about under a 6.0, if they're not a, a real key for a Silver Age book, I've made a lot more money selling ones raw than I have sending in. Obviously, if it's a key, like a you know, Daredevil 1 or Journey into Mystery 85 or whatever you know, big time book there is, it's, it's worth sending in. But if you're just talking about just a random book from Amazing Spider-Man run, it's more valuable, raw probably, than slabbed, unless even in Silver Age you're talking you know, eight O's or plus for just random filler runs of these long titles. But I'm curious if you agree with that or if you have found more value added to some of even these filler books at kind of mid-grades uh, if you send them in for the Silver Age. That, that's just my experience. And all this obviously is just based on my experience. Of course, I'm just one person, so I'm working off of my data points, but there's lots more data points out there. And if you've had a very different experience, I'm really curious to know what you think. But in general, I have found for me, especially early on, and I hear this from a lot of people, you know, you, you send in way too many books and then you learn the hard way. Dang it, I shouldn't have sent that one in. And you get burned a few times and I'm trying to protect you guys from, from getting burned. And so if you're new to submitting, be very conservative in what you submit. And it's very hard because it's so exciting to send books off and then to get them back and to look at them. And obviously when you have a hit, there's you know, real joy and excitement. But when you get a miss, ugh, you know, it, it, it's like a punch to the gut. And so I want to spare you the punches to the guts. So start off maybe finding 10 books that you feel pretty good about sending off to CGC and, and really be harsh in your grading. You're like, if you first start off like, okay, this looks like a 9.8 to me, but I need to ask myself, would I, would I be happy if it came back a 9.0? And really even now I use that criteria when I'm evaluating, you know, like, I'm like, I, I really feel like this book's a 9.4, uh, but I'm not gonna send it in unless I would be okay if it came back at 9.0 or an 8.5 or something like that, because you just never know. You know, just recently I sent a book in that I was sure was a 9.4, but it came back an 8.0, and I really feel like it was strange, the greater, yeah, I, I still totally disagree. I mean, I thought the floor was a 9.0, and they gave me NATO. I, 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 I don't know, you know what the heck happened. But that was a book that I could have sold, I think, for about $80 raw. It's a DC Comics Presents 49, which is this classic battle cover of, of Black Adam uh, against Superman and Shazam. 
and I ended up only selling it for eighty dollars. <laughs> yeah, it was slabbed, and I still made a little money on it because I bought it for three bucks. So I made a little money, but uh, basically I just wasted fifty bucks. Yeah, sending this for pressing and grading, and uh, yeah, it, it was painful to just be like, dang it, I could have just put it on eBay and got my eighty bucks that way, but I, I got kind of greedy. Well, I don't really think I got greedy. At the, yeah. I mean, everybody thinks they get screwed by CGC, but I, I do feel on that one, they, they really did me dirty. I, I, I still am at a loss. But you've got to have that in your thinking. You've got to realize, hey, you know, this book looks immaculate to me, but I don't know what that grader is going to think when he picks it up. You know, maybe he's having a bad day. Maybe there's just something I missed. And so yeah, you put that in, in your thoughts, you know, like to say, okay, uh, again, I'm, I'm going around in circles, but I think this is a 9-4, but I would be happy if it's an 8-0, I'll send it. And then obviously over time, you you get more experience with grading and you can tell a 9-6 a from a 9-0 a little bit better. And then maybe you can expand what books you, you send in. But, but my advice would be to start slowly. I know that's hard. I know if you're excited about sending in, you just want to send in all the books. That's what I want to do. I've got all the books I want to send in. But take your time. You've got plenty of time. You can send your other books in later. They don't have to be done right now. Thankfully, CGC turnaround times have gotten a lot better. And so you can put in your first submission. And then maybe three, four months down the road after you get those books back, put in another submission. And you know, take it one step at a time. Learn as you go. That's what I did, and it's what I'm continuing to do. You know, I'm still gathering data points and getting better about knowing what books to send in the CGC or not. But anyway, those are some thoughts about how I determine what books I'm going to send in the CGC. But I'm curious if you use any different criteria. Please let me know in the comments below, or if you think yeah you know, any of my ideas are just bad, you know, like let me know that too gently, uh, or just other things that you found helpful. I mean, these are just some again thoughts that I've had uh, from the few submissions that I have put together. So thanks for watching. Of course, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, I'd appreciate if you'd consider doing so. Like the video, all those things that help our channel out. I enjoyed making this video, and as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.